One of the quotes in your book is, leadership is a journey that never ends. There is no finish line in the race to be a good leader. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that means? Yeah, I think it's summarized in a lot of different ways. I mean, I would I would say one, I think sometimes I've had companies bring me in and they'll say, you know, he's a you know retired Navy SEAL and a leadership expert. And I would never, ever, ever describe myself that way. I would describe myself as a, a student of leadership. Uh, and, and the reason being just because leadership is forever evolving. And even as the individual, it's always evolving. Once it, just because you've had all these unique experiences in leadership doesn't mean that things you've used in the past are definitively going to work in this scenario. Uh, every scenario may take different nuances of leadership. And, uh, and I think good leaders recognize that and they recognize that they may try something and, you know, maybe if you're, Younger in your leadership, you may just do the same thing. Oh, well, let me keep trying this and hopefully get a different outcome. But uh, so that's one thing. And then I think the other thing is uh, a good friend of mine and and business leader, coach, uh, Bedros Koulian wrote that, you know, never peak. So we should always be aspiring to be better. And I think I naturally feel that way. Um, I don't think I'm quite as competitive as I was when I was younger. So in some ways I am... I'm not so competitive that I want to, like, I I know some guys out there in business, like they're fueled by, they'll sit here. We would be having a conversation and someone else, they'd be sitting here looking at me and all they'd be thinking about is I can't wait to beat you, dude. Like I want to make more money than you. Like that's my driving force. Like, and, uh, I don't know, man, I don't tick that way anymore. Like I want you to be successful and I want to be successful, but my success is based off, continuing to move the needle in my life every day in all areas. So my family's still good. And I come home to a a, a beautiful house that I'm content with, but I'm not cash broke on. And, um, and for me, it's, it's moving the needle and doing things with my family. Um, it's, it's uh, trying to build more relationship with my friends and trying to figure out how to help more people. So that, that's my never peaking in all direction. And that, and that calls for, constantly learning and leadership because it's uh it's always changing the world is changing you're changing you're growing the people you're leading and working with are changing and growing your kids your family are changing and growing so uh so that's why i believe it'll never end unless unless you get short-sighted and think that you know everything which usually is is a uh uh it is a uh a death call Pride comes before the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And I've definitely, arrogance has taken me down before. Yeah. And you've written about that, and it's, uh, I think that's impacted a ton of people. I think, um, you know, we were just talking before this, and you were talking about what success meant to you, but a lot of people have, they've never really defined what success means to them, so they're chasing maybe some of the effects of success, and if they define that as success, everything else falls to the wayside. Families businesses, relationships, whatever that may be, success in one aspect, when they get so narrow, they, they leave everything else out. So that's a hard lesson. I think a lot of people learn. Yeah. And usually it's too late when you, uh, when you finally figure it out, usually everything is kind of broken Yeah, and you're alone trying to deal with that life ambush has finally settled in. You know, you've been attacked in some area and uh, the, this is something that I speak on, and it's I talk about it with social leadership, that um, you've got to take time to invest in, I, I describe it as four different rings. So uh, the outer ring is your business relationships. Uh, the inner ring is kind of your acquaintances and more of your close business friends, partners. Uh, that next inner ring is close friends. Uh, and then that, that centermost ring is your family. Uh, and oftentimes, especially here in America, we have a tendency to put a lot more focus on those outer rings than our inner rings. And we just kind of take those inner rings for granted. Yet I watch so many people that, uh, encounter some kind of life ambush, some kind of life crisis. And, um, and those rings go away. What I, what I describe it as is we all ride along on trains. And if something happens that you get thrown off the train, some sort of major crisis, you know, you guys are riding along on the ironclad train, um, you know, the, the video production train, 
And I rode along on the SEAL train, and then now I'm riding along on the leadership, uh, resiliency, speaking, coaching train. So if, if something was to happen, we get thrown off the train. Well, everybody else keeps riding on that train. You know, they don't just get off because you got off, you know, your crisis, although they may feel bad for you that something happened to you and they may stop by a few times, their life keeps going. And uh, it's sometimes hard to see that. You know, I explain it from when I was laying there on the battlefield. Um, In the end, I didn't think about all the things I had or the success or my rank or anything of where I was. All I thought about was, you know, my wife and kids and how, man, I wish I would have had just a couple more minutes with them before I thought I was checking out. So I talk to people a lot about that, that uh, have perspective and, and invest in, in all these rings because it's in the hardest times of your life that those innermost rings are going to be there for you. And they're the rings that you want at the end. Uh, all this other stuff we do is awesome, but uh, you know those things don't matter in the end. You're not going to care about them. I'd never, not once did I... Not once when I was laying there dying did I think about uh, a vehicle or a motorcycle or how much money was in my bank account or if my house missed me or any of that stuff, man. You just think about the, the people who are important to you. 